What's up, guys? It's your boy Aniki here. I'm going to keep it real with you. I just recorded 10, 15 minutes of a video and just lost it all. So uh, it's going to be a little harder for me to have like the energy that I just had. In fact, I might just end up rabbit running through some of the stuff I already said on accident just because I said it already. I'm going to try to still give you a, a good analysis. Boop, boop. Uh, but if I end up missing some stuff just because I already covered a lot, my bad. Opening with the Fuyumi panel, though. We get Fuyumi establishing that uh, we don't know what this is about. We don't know why it's here. I'm just going to assume that it's about like her rooting for Shoto and, and NJ to get back together, or, like get along finally. Obviously, later on in the chapter, we find out that that's not going to be the case. Um, in fact, uh, so the thing that I want to like just I'm going to lead with this right now. Also, important, the most important thing about this chapter is that Endeavor, as many of us have been telling the My Hero Academia, basically just the hoary haters that uh, who have sworn that Endeavor was getting off super easy, he was going to be able to get away, oh, he had a little bit of man pain, and da 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 da, -da. nope. I'm glad that these brain deads have no choice but to admit that it hasn't gone that wrong. In fact, on Twitter, after this chapter came out, I actually made it a point to interact with somebody who had been blasting Horikoshi and been blasting Endeavor and blasting the entire situation. And I like pointed out to them, I was like, you know, I'm really glad. Like one of the things I'm glad about this chapter is people who have criticized Horikoshi's handling of Endeavor can't really like have any room to, you know, they don't have any room to say that he's getting off easy now. Because I told a lot of them, and this person specifically had called out already multiple times for terrible opinions on this situation, and uh, they basically were like oh well i still don't trust horikoshi to like do right which is basically him admitting yeah okay fine i was wrong but i refuse to accept the fact that i've been wrong this entire time so the hori haters are going to keep coming and all we can do is keep fact checking them so that's just the reality of the situation we live in people are actually that dedicated to just kind of hating on my hero and it's really weird because if you think about it like we could all just be enjoying like manga series we like but instead, this person wants to admit that they skim the series and then level like baseless criticisms at it and claim that it's not handling like its abuse storylines or anything like that. Even though we get basically it showed oh, once again reaffirming. By the way, keep in mind that the Kyushu incident, which was the pro hero arc, I happened in like November and it's January and Shota was still on the SS fuck my dad. So these people really, really, really don't have a basis for the dialogue that they're spewing and you can straight up tell them that if you ever if you're you know like me and you are on twitter and you encounter these people and they want to talk about how endeavor got off easy and horikoshi forgives abuse and x y and z you can point them to this chapter you can point them to the fact that rei todoroki said her doctor said that it, and, and like and that's the other thing people will be like oh endeavor didn't apologize to rei Endeavor's literally not allowed to talk to her um so yeah, we get Deku being Deku. I think this chapter is a little shorter because Horikoshi decided to just be honest and write the essay instead of like relying on the gimmick of facial expressions and having people listen to like a long drawn out thing. Uh, so instead we get a quick concise essay in one panel of his mouth just moving really fast, explaining Black Whip, explaining what he's there to achieve because that's what like uh, Endeavor wants to talk to him about. You know, he asked Bakugo and Deku like, I don't know you two, what are you after? Deku's after controlling his powers better, getting, you know, parallel processing is what it's called. Uh, Bakugo is after figuring out the weaknesses of his self because his quirk is one of the best in the series. The, rem the repercussions of using explosion has given him increased durability, increased because he has to be able to take the recoil, increased strength because, again, like, he has to be able to take the recoil. He also ends up having to be physically stronger. There's not a lot of 15-year-olds that can pick up another 15-year-old that's only like a centimeter shorter than them, grab them with one arm, and actually throw them. Keep that in mind. Um, so it's given him augmented speed, flight, uh, range projectiles. So Bakugo, it also gives him flash grenades, so utility, which are really are automatically concussion grenades due to the volume. So you have a character who has a single quirk who, yes, that was definitely him throwing shade at both Shoto and Deku, Shoto, who is considered the perfect child due to the fact that he is a combination of quirks. And keep in mind, Bakugo is aware of Shoto being a quirk marriage. This is covered in the sports festival. Uh, Deku is aware of all the things because Shoto directly told him. So when you get to later on in the arc or in this chapter where 
uh, Shoto and Deku, or when Shoto was telling uh, Endeavor that he needs to step off and not be like all buddy buddy like their best friends, this is his genuine feelings. This comes from the place of, but also you notice that like Bakugo and Deku just have dot dot dots, whereas Burnin has a question mark because Burnin obviously doesn't know about any of the abuse or any of that other stuff because it's not like Endeavor goes to work and he's like, yeah, today I punched my kid so hard he puked. Eh. Like, no. He goes to work and he's like, let's go beat All Might, even though we'll never achieve it. And then like, they keep going. Now, the thing, like, there's a lot of things about this that I actually really like. And it's because we finally get uh, someone to just like hard, like sitting there saying like, look, this is what hero work is. Rescue, evacuation, combat. My agency specializes in all three. We're going to save people. We're going to beat people's asses and we're going to uh, do what it takes. Now, there's nothing in particular... The paneling layout does show what each person is like working on. So, for example, Deku was like, man, he took off faster than the Sonic Boom. And Deku was like the analytical one. So when he talks about you got to know your home turf like the back of your hand, do all this analysis. That's why Deku's there. Uh, Endeavor breaking the sound barrier in his sneakers. But also talking about like you got to get to the scene faster than anyone uh, Bakugo specifically felt kind of slighted by Hawks stealing his kill, but also the fact that he said that and he had to think about, like, what did that entail? What kind of speed does that look like? How do you get to the scene faster than anyone? You break the sound barrier getting there. Keep damage to a minimum. Now, think back to the fight where uh, Bakugo and Shoto were taking on the carbonated water dude. They almost let somebody uh, get injured. Shoto, like, threw up the ice but like they thought it was a carnival instead of thinking about the fact that they were in danger and so he's like blast some heat you know like do something so that they know it's a dangerous situation if it's the middle of winter and it's just cold and random ice shows up there's no reason for people in their mind at least because this kind of normal in a normalized world where people have powers and you can just sprout ice or whatever it kind of makes sense to just assume that oh like is this a pop-up carnival or whatever they want to like decide or take away from that so you need to make sure that you give people a reason to know that they're in danger without actually hurting them while also focusing on the mission and so this is kind of like that parallel processing thing in action like when we talk about it now like as I'm explaining it you're seeing like all these like little scenarios and checklists and things like that you're hitting and making sure that you are performing them to an adequate degree because you are um, you know supposed to be saving people this is a 13 page chapter and most of it was exposition um, and so this isn't going to be like one of the longer reviews, thankfully, because I lost over 10 minutes of content already. Um, here's the thing. This winter, show me that you can just you can beat just once a villain faster than me. So here's the thing. This arc, the work studies are specifically over the winter break. So this arc is not, I repeat, I do not believe, I'm going to say I do not believe I'm not going to say you I know this because I'm not Horikoshi, but this arc is not supposed to be covering the entirety of the four months. I think their work study will be at Endeavors for the four months. Like there's a chance that they'll just like get to keep going with their work study after this couple of weeks are over, after this homework is done. But what that does do is free up what the narrative focus of this arc can be. Because if this arc is just their work study and then we're going to transition to other things that's fine the reason why that is fine is because if everybody's continuing work studies even past winter break at any point we can cut away to anyone else's work study still but we can also transition like what is going on with villains what's going on with other characters and in the meantime actually keep it going but not be locked into we have to do this four months of deku bakugo and shoto only like that's not what's going to happen um even and like as much as people like it's kind of funny because while the origin trio are the established three main like characters from class 1a it's imperative to note that we actually have not gotten an arc that was heavily focused on the three of them collectively like with that like every, like the story threads were tied to them the character interactions were about them that has not happened since the provisional license exam like let's like the reality is like the joint training arc Bakugo and Deku had some interactions Bakugo and Deku each had a match Shoto had a match but that arc did not exist the purpose of that arc was not yo let's wank the origin three the purpose of that arc was to hype up class B a bit introduce Shinso show us uh, Bakugo's character progress introduce the you know black whip introduce uh, 
like explain monoma like there's like so many important things happen with class b that calling uh joint training especially uh rounds one and two where obviously the they weren't relevant at all uh sorry like they're like calling joint training arc an origin trio arc wouldn't be fair to what was actually covered within the context of the arc especially because in the round three nobody's picking shoto as their mvp everybody if you ask somebody who's the mvp of round three they'll tell you mudman ida tattoo 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 hell i actually put pony sunatori up there in the mvp conversation for round three because at the end of the day the only reason it was a tie is because she had the quick thinking to make sure she prioritized the rescue and protection of her allies and shoji could not answer her because she took the time to practice flying on her horns which in of itself is something that like massive utility thought like foresight to practice that so um if you go if so if we go even further though like before joint training is pro hero arc and that's definitely not an origin trio arc culture festival jiro daku gentle uh the entirety of the class's art project but definitely not an arc where you'd be like shoto daku and bakugo where like the main focus the trio overhaul arc no the trio is not the focus daku is paired with a bunch of other people uh remedial course arc fine you want to complain about four chapters of daku and bakugo focus i mean bakugo and shoto focus like come on the last time we really focused we really truly genuinely focused in on these guys and had like an arc that was like showing Shoto's character interactions and Bakugo's uh, failings and Deku's like progress was provisional license so I think people need to just because you don't remember something or just because you're not necessarily focused on stuff doesn't mean it's not important or that it's not relevant um like a lot of people will say Uraraka hasn't had a lot of moments sorry buddy but like she was the mvp of round five took out yanagi took out koda arrested monoma saved deku like sorry don't sit around and pretend like she's useless she's not sakura from part one 2.0 i'm sorry that that hurts your feelings so yeah um there's nothing in particular that like the one of the things that i will say though is that deku mentioned specifically operating at 10 to 20 percent so we now know that full cowling is at the 10 percent mark which makes sense uh he hit eight percent he was at five percent around uh may of his time like his timeline wise the provisional license exam takes place in august if i remember correctly or august or september so when they took yeah because i believe it's september and march so six months apart so if i remember correctly they take the provisional license in september that's when he fights bakugo that's the revelation of eight percent we get the overhaul stuff which happens in october which ends up being the uh 20 percent reveal and then we start getting like uh you know air force that kind of stuff and then by the time we get to january he's at like 10 percent. so he's basically between may june to january december doubled his proficiency in one for all yes 10 percent isn't as great as uh five percent but he's literally double the power level he was at at the beginning of the series as far as uh, his full cowling power level upon introduction and that's before factoring in that he can technically 20 percent smash uh people with manchester smash st louis smash he could technically go up to 20 percent for any of his like regular attacks without damaging his body so that is an important detail just to know that like deku's like base like his floor limit for full cowling is just like his ceiling for full cowling maintained without hurting himself is climbing he's making progress this is another way to uh, this is like an in canon like exposition like it's truly an expositional bubble to just explain everything that's going on and we know that black whip uh he can't use it it seems like he can't use it at like the eight or twenty percent or ten percent fire off rate yet i think he's still like adjusting the fine tuning because he's technically pulling something else but yeah um the main the only other main thing that i would talk about is how endeavor specifically uh highlighted that he sees himself or like sees sympathy within deku because of the fact that his quirk has like such strong backlash and uh, the fact that he sees within Bakugo the idea of having a good quirk, being physically strong and powerful, but not having like necessarily the character or the fortitude to handle or to be a hero and like having these internal struggles. So essentially what you have here is with Shoto being there, Endeavor is forced to confront his past. Uh, with Bakugo being there, he's forced to confront his disposition. And with Deku being there, he's forced to confront his vulnerability. The three of them being here 
will undoubtedly lead to more changes within de in Endeavor, which also means more death flags. So, uh, if you like anything I have to say, like, subscribe, comment, share. You guys know how YouTube works. I try not to, you know, act like, yo, you gotta shill me. But like, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, you guys have a wonderful day. Sorry, this one's a day late, but I uh, ended up running around doing some stuff yesterday and that's just how it kind of all like shook up and since i only do releases videos uh, based off viz release even though i do make it a point to not get spoiled uh, since i only do videos based on viz release uh it's basically like i have to do my video after 3 p.m and so if 3 p.m central time so if uh something randomly happens after 3 p.m central time then hey like i gotta go take care of that but the upside is is that i did sign my lease so i should be able to so this video and the one I do this upcoming weekend will be the last ones you see in this environment more than likely. And then from there we'll have a new layout, new background. Uh, my sound quality will probably be even better because I'll be in a different space with less background noise or ambient noise. So yeah, that's all stuff that you have to look forward to. Plus once that happens, I should be able to go back to handling my uh, character analysis videos. I told you guys Shigaraki and them was coming, so yeah. Definitely going to start the Rise of Villainy series soon. You guys have a wonderful day. Anaki out.